What's going on everybody, Mike here, welcome to another Symfony tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about menu item configuration, more specifically we're going to talk about major groups and family groups. So major groups and family groups are two items we use for reporting purposes. If I'm going to sign in to my workstation here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an employee report and then I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then if we take a look here on the bottom section of the report in this area, we can see all of the breakdown of all of our family groups, items like breakfast, buffet, appetizer, soups and salads. And then at the bottom, we see a subtotal of the major group. So the major group is the parent item that we use for reporting purposes like food, liquor, wine, and ABEVs. And the family groups are the child records that are found within this particular major group. Again, things like breakfast, appetizers, pizza, entrees, and everything. So let's take a look in EMC at the configuration and see how we have everything configured. Uh, all of my major groups and family groups are configured at the enterprise level. So be very careful what level you have your configuration at and select it. Under the configuration tab here, we're going to find major groups and family groups. So let's start with major groups. As I open my tab here, you will notice we have all of our major groups listed and then the zone location where they are found. So also you're going to see that they have like their regular name and also we have this reporting group. Uh, the reporting group is another way to combine different major groups together. Imagine if you would have, for example, the food department separated from the liquor department. I've seen restaurants where this was separated like that, so you would want to know at a glance what the subtotals were. So if you want to know all the food items, right, you would assign food and probably any bev uh, to a reporting group one, for example. And then liquor, beer, wine, you would assign them in cocktails, you would assign them to reporting group two. Uh, mine are configured as a one-to-one -one because I want to know the breakdown individually. I don't want to have them combined together. So you would have one breakdown of each major group and then you can use a second breakdown with the reporting groups. If you want to add a new major group, you can click the little insert key here select an available record where the major group is going to go. So my next position available is nine, but you can move it further down. And then you would just give it a name. I have all the major groups that I need, so I'm not going to add one right now. If you need to remove one, you can just select it by clicking on the rectangle at the end of the row here and then clicking the delete key. We usually set up the major groups at the beginning when we set up our system and we don't change them unless we need to. Uh, removing a major group whilst it already has totals, meaning you use this major group in the, in the past and you have some sales from six months ago that are linked to a particular major group, but let's say you don't want to use it anymore. We don't recommend removing it. You can just leave it there and then just add a new one. Just don't use those menu items anymore. Now that we've seen our major groups, let's take a look at the family groups. So I'm going to go back to my homepage and click on family groups. And here are all my family groups. Notice that just like the major groups, they have their names. They have a reporting group just like them, but they also have a parent major group. So this is where we link the functionality between uh, the, the child, the family group and the parent, the major group. So when I was showing you that report earlier and you noticed that all my family groups appeared under one subtotal, which was food, uh, that's how we program that, just having kind of a one-to-one. -one. Uh, when you're programming your database, I always leave spaces between them because I don't want my family groups, if I need to add more in the future, uh, I don't want them to be spread out all over the place. So if you noticed in this particular block here, I have all my family groups for food. And uh, they go from 101 to 113. But if we need to add one more, I can just add it because I have space between 113 and 201 here where my liquor starts. Uh, I don't recommend not leaving space because let's say you want to add another food uh, family group in the future, then you're going to have to ha go all the way to the bottom somewhere where you find an empty position. 
So this is just a good way to maintain your database. Next, we have all of our liquor family groups. And then we have our two beers. We just have our beers spread between domestic beer and imported. Um, you can split these further based on your reporting needs into bottle beer, canned beer, um, even, you know, tap beer, everything else like that. And then you can split them further into domestic bottle, domestic can, etc. Uh, for us, these two work best for right now. And then also we have our bottle of wine uh, and we separate the bottles from the glass and then we just separate them by the type of wine. So I have red, white, uh, rosé and sparkling. So you can have them all together just like bottle of wine and then glass of wine if you don't have a large wine selection uh, we do so our accounting department would like to see them broken down like this and also we have our na beverages uh, again you can break these further into sodas juices and everything else we just have na bevs uh, our na bevs kind of go together with our food cost so we just add that to this and it's just all together and then just a retail miscellaneous and then our modifiers here on the bottom. So it's up to you to get a fine balance between putting as many family groups as you need. But at the same time, you don't want to overdo it and have too many family groups because you are going to complicate the programming and having too many of them, you can introduce issues. So it's good to have them very detailed, but at the same time, don't don't go overboard. So now that we have our major groups and family groups all programmed, let's take a look at how we link them to the menu items. So here I also have my menu items located all at the enterprise level and I'm the same configuration tab. I'm just going to click on menu item maintenance. So our major groups and family groups were here and our menu item maintenance is here. So as we talked about in the video where we discussed general concepts of menu items, um, the database does not automatically populate. What we need to do is click a search. So once we click search, it's going to expand this field really quick so we can see them all. Uh, we can see all of our menu items here. Uh, if you want to learn more details about menu items, look for the video where we discuss only the menu item configuration in detail. So the menu item has a master record, a definition and a price record here on the bottom. Uh, the master record is the one that is responsible for giving the menu item its name and also its reporting capabilities. Uh, the menu item definition is where we add all of the behavior of the menu item, meaning is it does it require any special condiments, where does it print, where does it appear on the screen, and everything else uh, that is regarding the behavior of the item. And we have our price record here, which just defines the menu item price or prices. We can, of course, have multiple price records if we need to for one menu item. So back into our master record here in the header, this is where we give the menu item the name. So this name here that has um, under the name column uh, is the name that's going to appear in all of our reporting. This is where it's going to appear in the reporting and analytics portal. And this is what we're going to also see on our reports at the workstation. So besides having a name, I'm going to take a look at this pastry basket here. Uh, this is where we have our major group. So these are drop downs. If we click on them, we can change the major group as we need to. So then we can uh, select a different major group or assign the major group that we need for it. And then if we move further, we're also going to see our family groups. Notice when they select this particular drop down, because the major group was food, I will only see the family groups that are assigned to the food item. If your family group is not listed here, if you're trying to select a family group that is not in this list, go back to your family group section here and then make sure that this combination where you have the family group name is connected to the proper parent major group because if you don't have it, most likely this is um, not configured correctly. And last but not least, also we have our reporting group. Uh, so the reporting group works the same as it did for the major groups and family groups. So it's an additional way to combine different uh, menu items to kind of create subtotals based on reporting groups. So you're going to have a subtotal based on your major group, a subtotal based on your family groups, and then if you need to combine any of these and make combinations of them, then you can use these reporting groups as we did in the other section. Uh, the master group is not related to reporting this particular column. 
uh, we use the master group for some enhanced programming such as conversational ordering so you don't have to worry about this right now uh, one more thing to note here just keep in mind that major groups and family groups are only used for reporting purposes they will not affect the front of house pos in any way meaning if you have an item let's say that this particular pastry basket you want to change anything about the way it behaves such as what it appears on the screen or if it requires specific condiments changing the major group and family group will not make it move on the screen to a different place everything is handled that uh, every, uh, everything is handled by the definition uh, in that case so if you want to change the behavior of the item such as requiring particular condiments or not require condiments then you have to change the menu item classes and you can see the video where we discuss condiments more in more detail if you want to learn more about menu item classes and then if you want to change the location where the menu item appears on the screen uh, you might be using screen lookups uh, there's two ways of having menu items appear on a screen uh, one is using these slus or screen lookups where you tell the menu item where uh, which section to appear on uh, or you might be using hard-coded uh, buttons Either case, if you want to learn more about placing menu items in different areas of the screen, uh, see the page design video uh, we have on the channel. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire course where you can learn everything you need to maintain your Oracle Micros POS system. And as a special thank you, I also included a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and thanks for watching.